a pair of antlers. So first thing you need is potassium permanganate. That's what I use. Um, basically, it's this uh, it's this powder. All this comes in, in crystal form. So you can get that from your pharmacist. I get mine off eBay. But you just half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Depends how much how dark you want it. So these are quite big crystals as well. So I use just over half a teaspoon. Just a little bit more in there. And what you want to do, fill that up with hot water from the kettle. Just so just boil some hot water. Pour that in there and give it a good stain it. So it goes on purple. So I just get a little bit of my brush at a time. You don't want to get too much on there. Because if you put too much on, it just kind of blobs off and then you end up with um basically you end up with beads where the where it started to drip down. Now I like to give the first coat a nice thin coat all over the antler because personally I don't think antlers look good with really white tips because you'll re you'll see here the tips aren't really white. Hopefully that focuses. They're not proper white. And they especially wouldn't be if this was still brown, a nice brown brown book. So I'll do one antler to start with. Like I said, just very gently, just give it a good coating. And then once it starts to dry, you'll see straight away when it dries, it goes a nice brown colour. So what I'll do is, although towards the tips, the antlers do fade and polish off. So I'll give it quite a few coats down by the bottom. And then towards the top, I'll just start to look where he's started to polish off. You can see he's polished up quite nicely. Um, I'll just give it just the one coat just to bring a little bit of colour to it, but not too much. So as you can see, it's starting to go brown already. Browns up quite nicely. But it all depends on where your stag or buck or bull or whatever. It depends what he's been rubbing on. Obviously that's where he gets his colour. Obviously, I mean, if you really care about your skull, don't leave the skull open, kind of cover it over with something to stop this getting on the skull because it's a bitch to get off. It doesn't get off very, doesn't come off very easily. You have to sandpaper it off. So, and it doesn't come off with bleach. It reacts with bleach actually. So you want to keep it off the skull. Always brush away from the skull if you can. And don't have too much on your brush. So I like to just give my brush a quick flick to get any excess off. As you can see, there's quite a lot on the brush there. So especially when you're working around the coronet and the burr. Obviously with the roe deer they're quite rough, they've got quite a bit of what's called purling, which is this. So I like to just kind of dab it into the burr there. Obviously I'm getting a bit on the skull, I'm not too bothered about this skull. But yeah, I just like to dab it on. Even with this, I mean, dipping it in the cup's a bit too much, so I just take a little bit. And yeah, you can see it's starting to come up quite nice already. And that's the beauty of using thin layers. It dries quite quick and you can start your next layer pretty quick. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll carry on with him and then I'll join. I'll clip back in in a second. So I've just finished the one coat on the right side. As you can see, it's still drying where it's pink and where it's got that nice kind of polished brown look. It's much much better. You can see the colour difference already. Um, I mean, I'm using a pretty big brush, 50mm brush, which is just too big for a little deer like this. I mean, if you're using, if you're doing a big red, a big antler, um, it's like a red deer antler or something, for example, that's perfectly fine to be using. Um, however, with all deer really, once you get down to the, to the base of the antler, where it's a lot more kind of rough and detailed, you're a lot better using a finer detail brush. Because, I mean, you can do the big bits quite easy with a big one, but when you get down to the little bits, you do really need a smaller brush. If you haven't got one, though, what I do, especially with the burr on a row book, so I turn it upside down. So let's see if I can get him in there. So I've got him in there. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of dab up towards the skull. I never brush towards the skull. Well, I did there, and I've realised why. But never brush towards the skull because what happens is as the brush comes off the antler it flicks and all the all the stain just flicks onto your skull and you get bits of spatter on the skull which you don't want because they'll dry brown like the antler. So I'll just need to do a little bit of sanding on that just to get that off later. 
But I mean, so far I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I mean, a cup of a cup of this much does would do a a big stag skull or a big elk or a big moose. I mean, it is just a really thin liquid. It's just as just as thin as water, really. So, so you don't really need a great deal for a small head. But it, it all depends how dark you want it. I mean. This is kind of getting to the natural colour, but I'm going to be bringing the bases a lot darker because he he does look like he was a much darker buck when he was uh, when he was shot or died or whatever. So, like I say, I mean, I'm just doing one side for now. Just doing one side for now, but so far, pretty happy. I'll just do the one and then do the other one so you can see the difference between the two colours. Um, what some people do is they'll can't get you sat down. What some people do is they'll um, they'll brush up to about here and then leave the tips white. I mean, that's not what happens. A buck doesn't just get to the tips of its antlers and stop rubbing them, uh, stop rubbing them on trees and mud and stuff. I mean, your best bet is to do one light coat up to it and then slowly start working your way up with the with the next coats and just bring them down each time and kind of rather than using a stroke of a brush I mean if you use the stroke of a brush I'll show you here if you bring it and then lightly lift it off you still get these drag marks what I find best is to brush it on and then kind of bring it back with your finger it makes a much more gradual change to just bring it back I mean it's not working too well on here but it brings a much more gradual kind of colour it does stain your fingers, so I mean, if you want, use rubber gloves. But what I do on the tips is I'll just kind of rub my thumb back, and it kind of brings out the polish on the edge. Hopefully you can see that. Brings out the polish on the edges. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with how he's turning out so far, so I'll crack on and do a bit more. Just another quick point here. Um, never, never put too much of the uh, mixture onto your brush. Because even if you're getting bored and fed up, you can see there it's starting to um, bulge up. And what you get is like little puddles or droplets. And basically they take ages to dry. Um, and if you leave it, for, you can see it runs up and down the antler if you have too much of it on. If you leave it upside down, it'll drip down. As you can see, it's starting to work its way down. See it there? Runs down the veins and you end up with little droplets on the tips. Um, which you don't want or it drips down onto the skull. So never have too much on your brush. Just give your brush a bit of a flick, just to get the uh, excess, just to get the excess off. Because I mean, there's no point rushing it. End of the day, if you end up rushing it and doing a bodge job like me, you can see there, I've got a bit on the skull. I should have really put some tape over it. You're just going to end up putting more work in to try and getting it back than what you needed to. Okay, so that's one antler done. Uh, as you can see, where there's where there's not been any of that black kind of leftover colour, it's a lot more matte. So what I'll do is I'll rub some dirt into that to give it a bit more contrast. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, like I say, where it's pale and got no colour left, it's best to kind of rub a bit of dirt on it, give it a bit more contrast. But yeah, I mean, pretty happy with how he's turning out. So I'll get started on the second one. Nice one. Mm. So first of all, I've got this pair of moose antlers. Now moose are quite weird because they're so palmate. So palmated, the... Um, the forward facing part of the paddle um, gets quite a lot of sunlight on it so it kind of fades out and goes a greyish kind of colour whereas the back of the paddle is a lot browner um, so with moose antlers in particular you want to do the back a lot browner and darker than you do the front but these are already quite old um, God, God knows when this moose was shot so they're not really the right colour, they're quite faded anyway so I'll probably do those at some point uh, but yeah, that's that about moose. And these are three roe deer I've got. Obviously this one's snapped off his antler on one side. But you can see he's got very pale antlers. So he's been rubbing up on probably aspen or something, I don't know. But obviously you can see this one's got a lot, a lot darker antlers. So in contrast, it all depends on what colour you want, where they've been kind of laying out. I mean, if you've got an antler to match, say if you found the right side of one antler, one like when it was fresh and the left side a different year or something always use the other one as a reference to see what colours I mean even here you can see there's certain parts where the colour just can't get to so 
so they won't be black they won't be nice and colored all over sometimes they uh sometimes they just color up in certain areas so like down the middle sometimes they can't quite color up well and that's a pier david antler now they're quite a smooth antler so they don't really they don't really have much um area for the color to stay on there so as you can see the grooves get quite a lot of mud and stuff in there and kind of retain their color but the rest of the antler just kind of kind of gets polished off um so yeah it all depends on the species as well don't think that all antlers are the same color uh, and here's a couple of red deer antlers different different individuals but you can see here he's been rubbing up quite a lot up his main beam and up the uh, tray tine um, and that's on the inside but then, but then on the outside he's not rubbed up, rubbed up as much so you can see where the antler is rougher and it's got more texture to it it's usually darker in those spaces um, and obviously you can see on the back here where it's nice and smooth don't put much colour on those because that's where it's polished off uh, my next point is with red stags in particular I've noticed that the crown tips aren't very white but the brow tines and the front three tines tend to get a lot more polished up and a lot more white so don't colour them all the same colour is my point there Whoops. And my next point is if you've got an antler that's nice and green, like this one's been laying on its back, so the algae started to grow on it, you don't want to bleach that because it is still got a good colour underneath it. So even if it's an old antler, they don't always need restaining. This one will just need a bit of a wire brush and some warm water, or just a, or just a brush and some warm water to just brush the algae off. I mean, there's going to be areas on this antler that's quite faded, but the last thing you want to do to this is sandpaper it off or bleach it or anything because it has got the colour on there. Um, I mean, it's a couple of years old, this one, but there's no point in uh, stripping off the colour if you don't need to because obviously the natural colour under that green is going to be much nicer than what I can do. So yeah, that's just a few points about the different antlers and things. Okay, so here I've got the row book I've been doing. Um, as you can see, he looks very good right now. I'm pretty happy with how he's turned out. One thing that I wanted to add is the longer you leave it drying, the better it goes. So, I mean, over a course of a week, it'll turn up better and better. So it's kind of, it's not showing very well on the video here. But in my hand, it blends very well. And you can see it blends out very nicely. So if you've rubbed, if you've just finished him and you're looking, you're looking at him and you're thinking he looks a bit, a bit too orange or a bit too purpley, just let them dry out for a bit more um, and just don't rush it don't don't use too big a brush don't do too strong a mixture so it's better to do thinner layers with less less of the powder to so do more and more thin layers than it is to do one or two thick layers because you don't get you don't get the blend very well if you use too many thick layers so it's best to use a small concentration so probably just under half a teaspoon to one cup of water um, and yeah, just don't rush it. Cover your skull up. I mean, I've not done too bad, but you can see, you can see there's some stain on the on the pedicles. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with him. It's turned out all right. So one thing I'm going to do is probably get some nose bones to fix that, and then it'll be a nice little skull. Uh, one thing that people might do is just with some sandpaper um, or grit paper, really low grit. Don't use a really rough one. Just gently go over the curling just to bring out that color so i'll probably do it on this side um but yeah it looks really good i'm very happy with him so hopefully that's going to be of some help to some people that are shooting velvet robux or finding dead animals that have faded or any antlers or anything um so yeah hopefully that's good help to you please do follow me on instagram i'm uk antlers subscribe to youtube i'm also got a facebook page uk antlers as well